America's team, the Cowboys, are sitting at 17 to 1 to win the Super Bowl over in the NFC. They are 7 to 1 to win the NFC. And then in the division there, they are plus 145 behind the Philadelphia Eagles. Femi, the big story I think right now, I want to get your opinion on how, if you think that this mm-hmm. could be a distraction for this team and if it's bettable information, if it's something that maybe we wanted to fade, was Adam Schefter came on just a couple of days ago saying that Dak Prescott, C.D. Lamb, Micah Parsons all looking for deal are not very far along in these negotiations. Ian Rappaport comes out and says that Dak Prescott wants $60 million a year to get it done. Lamb apparently wants Jefferson money, if not more. Is this something that you think is a, a big thing that we should look at even from a betting standpoint? Because we know it's not just one disgruntled player. It could be two. It could be three maybe when it's all said and done. I think from a contract standpoint, I don't think Dak will be any sort of distraction. He's been mm. down this road with them before. Like he played on the franchise tag. He had the uncertainty. They played another year on the tag where he ultimately mm. ended up shattering his leg. Luckily, he was able to come yeah. back from that and ultimately signed the big contract deal that is expiring this season. So I think Dak will be fine. I actually think Micah Parsons will be fine as well, just given the fact that this was the first year that he's mm. eligible for the extension but CD Lamb I do have concerns about a little bit you know those wide receivers you never know it's like yeah. like they want their money and they see that this is sort of the summer of wide receivers all these guys getting paid Jefferson being chief among them Jamar Chase wants another contract as well Brandon Ayuk he wants mm-hmm. his deal so I could see maybe CD Lamb being kind of an issue he also skipped out on the mandatory yeah. minicamp as well uh, this past week or so so that's my concern but I think the biggest concern with the team overall is the fact that you have a lame duck head coach like that is unavoidable like, you have Mike McCarthy, who I'm not the biggest McCarthy fan. I don't yeah. think he's a terrible coach, right. but I don't think he's one of the best coaches in the league either. But he's going into the final year of his contract, and there has been no talks of extending him because Jerry Jones wants to see what happens. Now, I would tell Jerry, you saw what happened last right. January. Probably should have made a move then, but he wants to sort of play this thing out and not have to pay multiple coaches at the same time. But I can see that being the biggest contract problem on this yeah. team is the fact that you have a head coach that's going into the final year of his deal, and if this team doesn't win multiple playoff games, I think everybody would expect that they would move on. Trayvon Diggs going to return from a torn ACL. They took left tackle Tyler Guyton in the first round, Marshawn Nealon out of uh, Western Michigan with their second round pick. Both of those guys going to go in and start. Signed linebacker Eric Kendricks, of course, Royce Freeman and, and Zeke <laughs> Elliott. But the other big knock here coming out of the offseason, and I'm sure this is something you've talked about a, a ton, is just the fact that a lot of fans out there are saying, they were not very active. What are we doing? Mm-hmm. Why aren't we going and getting guys? Why do we have we, – we've got a quarterback. We've got a wide receiver. We've got all these – why are we not trying to make a push here? What are your feelings on all this? Because you do look at this team. We're talking about good teams. Eric, good, yeah. good teams, by far the quietest of all of the good teams out there in free agency. And and I think that there is some some something to the fact that you look at it and say, how much better did they get? in this offseason. Yeah, and I think that this is a team that I don't think they did get better. Mm. Like, like, If anything, they take a slight step back, which a slight step back from 12 yeah. wins is still a, probably still yeah. a pretty good team, but you're not up there with the contending teams, whether it's the Niners, the Lions, the Packers, the Eagles, those kind of teams that we talk about when we talk about who could potentially represent the NFC in the Super Bowl. And I think that this was a lot of what Jerry's saying with the whole, like, we're going to go all in, was him saying, yeah, we're going all in with what we have right now. Yeah, Like, you guys who want these big contracts, Dak Prescott, CeeDee Lamb, Michael Parsons, you show me that you can make this thing work because I'm done pouring money into this team and we're going to go ahead and go clear blank slate potentially in the 2025 if it doesn't work out in 2024. So I think that's kind of where this team is just sitting there like, hey, this is the all in of like, all right, if it's ever going to happen, it mm-hmm. happens this year. Now, I don't think they've been set up as well to have success in 2024. Right. So it almost feels like, hey, like, go prove it. it was like, well, you're not really giving me the resources to help you help show that I can prove this thing. Uh, but unfortunately, I think that it's going to ultimately be a situation to where if, if they don't get it done, there's going to be big changes and Jerry doesn't want to commit long-term big deals or sign big free agents to these contracts if it's going to be potentially be a new head coach. I mean, Mike Zimmer, who they brought yeah. in as a defensive coordinator, he's on a one-year deal. Like, like everything, right. it seems like it's, all right, guys, like, last chance. Right. Show me. And if you don't show me, there's going to be big wholesale changes across the board. So we said that the MVP a little bit earlier in the show is a quarterback award. We can go down the list here. There's Mahomes and Allen and Stroud and Burrow and Love, Lamar Jackson, Brock Purdy, Aaron Rodgers, Jalen Hurts. But then we get to Dak Prescott, actually the same odds as, as Rodgers and Hurts, mm-hmm. sitting there at 16-1. to 1. If we start talking MVP, Patrick Mahomes is always going to be at the top of the conversation. Yep. You start to look at these other guys. But now we get down the board a little bit. We're trying to find some value. You look at a Dak Prescott at 16-1. to 1. Do you think if you were trying to go a little bit longer odds, would he even be someone you would consider? 
No, because I don't think they're going to really be a team that's contending for the mm-hmm. number one seed. And and, and I, I guess I should preface that by saying that the Dak McCarthy, I guess, combination has had a lot of success yes. in the regular season. Like the, the first year Dak got hurt, but then since then, since 2021, they've won 12 games three straight years. So like they do kind of contend right. for the one seed. They had a lot of success. It's the playoffs that's kind of been the issue for them. But given the fact that they've sort of lost, I mean, they lost Dan Quinn, which I think is a big loss. We'll talk about the commanders yeah. later on in the show. You lose some of those kind of secondary defensive guys on that D line. I think that hurts their depth a little bit. And also we have an offensive line that is young. You lose two starters in Tyler Biotis to the commanders and then Tyron Smith to the New York Jets. And Tyron Smith has had trouble staying healthy in the later portion of his career. But when he's on the field, he's still one of the better left tackles in the NFL. And you insert a rookie in Tyler Guyton, uh, a position that where he's going to be a little bit raw. And I trust him on offensive line when they draft that position. They've drafted a number of great players yeah. along the old line. So I'm assuming he's going to be a good player. But is he going to be a good player as a rookie? That might be asking a lot there of Tyler Guyton. So I think for Dak Prescott, I don't think it's going to be the big year that he had last year where he sec- finished second in right. MVP voting. So let's sit here and, and break down one of the bets you can make on Dak Prescott. Again, if you yep. haven't been to DraftKings, there are passing yards, passing touchdowns, all, all the things that are up over there. Let's stick in the passing touchdown market. Dak Prescott sitting up at 30 and a half. And just if you're if you guys are wondering, I mean, by far one of the highest numbers out there when you start to look at the kind of elite level quarterbacks. Yeah, Mahomes is always going to be way up there at 34 and a half, but you can go to some guys, I mean, Tua at 25 and a half, Burroughs at 28 and a half, Goff is at 25 and a half. So you can see where they've set the bar here for Dak Prescott. Maybe it's because of the running back situation too, which is not all that great. And they're thinking maybe they're going to be forced to throw a little bit more when they get into the red zone. But you are not liking that 30 and a half. No, no I'll go under that one. And he can still have a good season yep. if he doesn't throw 31 plus yes, touchdowns. Exactly. You know, it's like, like that's just a big number. And last year he had 36, which was a really awesome season. He had the best season of his career a year ago. And it's more so me fading that. It's like, where does he go from there? Like, this was the best Dak Prescott, the best version of them that we've ever seen over the course of a 17-game schedule. Based on the fact that they've lost those offensive linemen, I don't think that we're going to replicate that in 2024. And Dak, and most quarterbacks fit this bill as well, but they get a little uncomfortable when you shuffle around that offensive line. And now you're telling me that he has a rookie left tackle, and now he potentially could have a rookie interior lineman with Cooper Beebe, who they drafted as well in, in like, the third round. Like, there's just going to be two new starters along that offensive line that, yeah, at home they protect, but on the road they were a little bit shaky. Like, that kind of cost them the game against the Philadelphia Eagles on the road uh, earlier in in late October, I believe that game was. So I I think that there's just going to be a situation where the offense is not as prolific as it Mm -hmm. was a season ago. So I'd look to maybe play some unders on Lamb, but definitely on Dak Prescott there with a the t- touchdown pass prop. 30 and a half, that's just too big of a number given the uncertainty of that old line and with all the changes that they've made. Only three quarterbacks eclipsed to the 30 and a half last yeah. year. Uh, Brock a, Purdy just got right there at 31. Jordan Love at 32. And then Prescott again led the league yeah. there at 36. And knock on wood, like injuries are also another out potentially for unders as well. Like I don't want Dak to get hurt. It's a very favorite team that I root for. But like exactly. if that were to happen, you miss a couple games, all of a sudden you're a dog to go ahead and get to 30. 